to us tonight. And uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Faith and power warring for the promises. And uh, the short title is Warring for the Promises, but we're going to be talking about faith and power. It's important to know both of these. And uh, there are different ways to receive the promises of God. You know, God is out there in your future and he's uh, seeing things out there and he's declaring them, prophesying them back to you. And those become your promises, but they're not manifest yet. And so we're going to talk about how to manifest the promises because he's out there in your future and he sees the end and uh, he, he wants you to walk in what he sees in the end. And that's pretty exciting to me. And um, But some people don't know how to receive them. There are some promises that you can receive as a little child. And there's some that you have to war for. And some things that you can receive as a little child are like salvation and like being filled with the Holy Spirit. But there are other things you have to war for. Um, maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's uh, your relationships. Maybe, it's your, maybe children. it's your ministry, your destiny, healing. Uh, there are a lot of things you have to war for. And it's important to know what you receive as a child and what you receive by warring for it. And uh, it's only by the Holy Spirit that you'll know the difference. But let me tell you this. This is a clue. If it's not manifested in your life, God's mm -hmm. promised you something that has not been manifested in your life. Go ahead and begin warring for it. That's probably what you need to be doing. Mm -hmm. But there's some things you don't have to wait for. You just go ahead and war for from the beginning. And, and we need to know. You know, uh, Paul wrote in uh, 1 Timothy 6, uh, 12, I believe it was, that uh, we're to fight a good fight. Well, that says war to me. Amen, amen. There, there's things that we have to fight for. Some things you can just receive by faith. Some things you have to fight for. But it takes both faith and power. Now, let's look at a couple of verses here. I want to start with a uh, verse in Isaiah. And it talks about the promises of God. And, and then I'm going to talk about it. So read this, Sherry, first. Okay, Isaiah 46, uh, verses 10 and 11. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that will I do. Okay, so Hallelujah. where is God? He's in the end of your story. He, he's on out there in your future. Hallelujah. And he's seeing things that he wants for you, and, and then he's bringing them to you in a promise. And I'll give you an, an example of that. And 40 years ago, I had a dream about a black Ford pickup truck, and I knew that was a promise that God was promising me, uh, a black Ford pickup truck. And uh I began to tell people that, that I've seen it. I've had, I've had this dream. I've had this vision about a, a black Ford pickup truck. And uh, so during that 40 years, I, I never bought one. I never bought, I bought a lot of vehicles and we drive them for several years, but I was never released by the Holy Spirit to buy it. I've had money to buy cars, but that was a faith. That was something of faith. And, and I didn't know how to release the power. See, I'd never had anybody teach me what I'm teaching you tonight. Mm -hmm. It's important that you not only have faith, but you release the power too. And then uh, 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, I, I, I went out with my daughter, uh, Amy Elizabeth. We went to a new uh, car dealership and she was out walking around the lot with the, with the uh, salesman. And uh, in a little while, and I'm, I'm back in the uh, showroom and I'm looking at the, <laughs> at the, uh, window and I see my black pickup truck back out. Oh my goodness, the glory of Hallelujah! God just came on me because I knew that was my promise. That was my promise that God had promised me. And uh, so she's had it for about uh, 20 years. And uh, today, my granddaughter, yes. Annabelle, is driving that black Ford pickup uh, to Texas A&M. She's a Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now what I want you to see is that God is in, uh, there today with my granddaughter, Annabelle, and he sees, and he sees her driving my pickup truck. And so he promised me he's in the ending. Of, he's in that 
ending spot in my story. But, and so he saw it. He saw Annabelle driving that. And so he came back 40 years in the beginning uh, when that promise began and he, and he gave me that promise. Now, I never knew how to release the power to receive it, mm -hmm. but, but it, it's going to happen. You know, when God gives <laughs> you a promise, it's going to happen. And that's exactly what happened in my life. <clears throat> it happened yes. because God was in the future. Hallelujah. He was in the ending of the story. And I don't know whether the ending of your story is two generations, three, four hundred generations. I, that doesn't matter. But God's out there in all of those realms and he sees things and he promises them back to you. And you've got to know how to operate in faith and power and release the power to receive it. I, I could have bought a lot of cars, but I was never released by the uh, Holy Spirit to buy that particular one. But it was given to us. I tell you, it was supernatural. Mm -hmm. and, and like I say, today my granddaughter is driving my pickup truck, the pickup truck that I was promised. Well, so let's look at the promises then of God. And, and First Peter uh, gives us a lot of idea about the promises. And I want you to know that we are like a rock and we've got rough edges on it and we need to be put into uh, the Holy Ghost uh, stream of water and we rub up against other rocks <clears throat> with these pointy places on them and uh, we get to uh, grind all of that down. And when we're there in the Holy Ghost River, in a little while, those promises because if we keep fighting for our promises, keep receiving our promises and stay in that Holy Ghost river, then we're going to knock all those hard edges off of us. We'll be smooth and we'll be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's Amen. why the promises Amen. are so important. It helps us to stay in that river of the Holy Ghost and get all of those rough edges knocked off so that we can be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. I wish you'd read this here. Okay, this is Second Peter. Uh, one chapter one, verses three and four. For his divine power has been granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world on on account of lust. Well, hallelujah. Do you see it? We're being conformed to the image. The promises keep us in the Holy Ghost River. We keep looking for those promises. We keep uh, receiving them by faith. We keep warring for them. Then that keeps us there and we'll be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, if he didn't make us any promises, there, you know, there's not that incentive for us to stay in there in the Holy Ghost River like there are when he gives us so many promises to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, there are a couple of different ways to receive promises. And one is a little child and one is warring for it. So I want you to read mm -hmm. these two verses. The first one is Mark 10, 15. It's also in Matthew 18. Go ahead and read this. Truly I say unto you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will not enter it at all. Hallelujah. And then Matthew eleven twelve, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been treated violently and the violent, those, those warriors take it by force. So we can Hallelujah. war for our promises. So you have to know what, which way you're going to get the promises. Some of the promises you receive by faith. Others you have to war for. And there are precious promises. And so you need to be ready to war for them. And I want to look at a couple of examples in the Old Testament. To, uh, so we'll understand about the warring. And then we'll talk, bring, move it into the New Testament. But let's start with Gideon. And Gideon... The story begins to unfold in uh, Judges chapter 6 and then goes into uh, Judges 7. But I want to give you a background. Seven years, the Midianites had been coming in and robbing the food supply of Israel. Seven years. And so here Gideon has a little bit of wheat and uh, he's, he's hiding. He's fearful of the Midianites and he's hiding. Not where you would normally... Uh, 
uh, apply the threshing to the threshing floor for the grain, but he was over at the oh, where they do wine. It wasn't even the season for wine press, but he was over there because he was hiding. He was fearful. And, and an angel comes to him and, and calls him valiant warrior. <laughs> Uh, that, that gave you a clue right there. You're going to have to war. You're going to have to war. And so I'd like Sherry to read these two passages, uh, and then I'll let do some explanation. Judges 6, 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, valiant warrior. And in Judge six, uh, Judges 6, 14 and 15. And the Lord looked at him and said, Go in this strength of yours, <clears throat> and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? But he said to him, O oh Lord, how am, I to, how am I to save Israel? Behold, my family is the least in Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my father's household. Okay, let's just pause right there. So his view, view of himself, his vision of himself is he's the least and the least family, and the least tribe, and he's just the least of the least of the least, uh, because he's looking at himself and not at God. And so he's got to turn his attention. Hallelujah. And, and there, there's, some, there's some things in his bloodline he had to deal with. And one of the first things he had to deal with in his bloodline, and this, I'm saying this to all of us, we all have to face giants in our bloodlines. Uh, and you know what your uh, giants are. It might be uh, sexual immorality. It might be fear. It might be oppression, whatever mm -hmm, it is, mm -hmm. you've got to, you've got to face these and it's going to take some warring to do it. And one of the giants in his bloodline was that his father had an idol to Baal and he had to pull it down and it was a big deal. And, and the people wanted to kill him. He did pull it down. He got some servants together and they pulled it all down, cut down a grove. Uh, and, and then they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill whoever had destroyed the altar to Baal. And his father stood up now, and he defended him. He said, oh, why isn't Baal defending himself? So there's no reason to kill uh, Gideon. Gideon did it, but there's no reason to kill him if Baal is not defending him himself and his altar. And so the father stood up. And so what you, uh, what you do in your life is taking down those giants in your bloodline, that's going to change your family situation. It's going to, and it's going to go down through your bloodline. And we know that uh, Gideon had 32,000 soldiers to begin with. You know the story, but I just briefly review it. And that is, uh, that's the arm of flesh. He had enough people out there that maybe he could have. The, the, uh, there were many, many more Midianites, but... Uh, Made he, him feel better anyway. <laughs> yeah, he, he had enough people around him to make him seem important, but... But God said, no, let's get down. Let's get a lot of these out. And they only got down to 300. Uh, and then th they went out there and surrounded the Midianites. And all they had was a candle and a, an earthen vessel and a sword. And, and they broke the earthen vessel and the fire. So there was fire all around mm, the Midianites. Hallelujah. The sword, uh, and all the soldiers uh, shouted together, the sword, sword of, of the Gil Lord and, and the, the sword, sword of Gideon. Gideon. And so they defeated. So God put them in uh, all those enemies into Gideon's hand, and he delivered them because that was the promise. You save Israel, uh, but He showed him how to do it, and that's for all of us. He gives you a promise, but He has to show you how to do it. Because Gideon never would have come up with that mm -hmm. on his own. He had to hear from God Himself. But right. it was a big battle. But the, one of the turning points there was when God began to call him out, who he really was, valiant warrior. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the same thing applies to all of you. I'll use the word valiant warrior. All of you, God sees you as a Hallelujah. valiant warrior. There are battles that Hallelujah. have to be fought. Hallelujah. The next Hallelujah. one is Abram. And uh, this is uh, Genesis 15. Uh, Abram had some battles to fight. And here he is. Uh, God had promised him a son and that son uh, would uh, multiply. Uh, his seed would, mm -hmm. would multiply. Uh, so they'd be like the stars of the sky and the sand and the uh, sea. And, and then uh, uh, God, Abram asked, this is still at Abram in, in Genesis 15. His name's still Abram at this point. But he says in, uh, in verse 8, I, I just want to give you a highlight of where we're headed here. But it says, hey, how shall this happen? How will this promise happen? Mm -hmm. uh, and that, 
It's okay for you to ask God. You need to have that kind of relationship. It was the same thing that Gideon. Gideon asked uh, the, the angel of the Lord, how shall this happen? Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing it over here in Abram. He's asking, how's it going to happen? And then the Lord begins to explain to him. So read these two passages mm -hmm. in Genesis 15, please. Uh, seven and, uh, verses 7 and 8. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Galileans to give you this land to possess it. But he said, Lord, how may I know that I will possess it? How am I going to know? And then in verses 18 through 21, on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying, to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Canaan. Well, look at all these acts here. Here are, here are the enemies. They're in the land, all through the land, okay? And the Kenizzite, okay. the Kemotonite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the oh, these are a bunch of bad. The it's right, the Amorite, the Canaanite, <laughs> the Jebusite. <laughs> so, so God, listen to this. God promised a territory to Abram, and it goes all the way down to these rivers and those rivers and uh, the river and you. For the Euphrates and the Egyptian river. And, and and don't get concerned about what kind of peace treaties have happened over there in Israel mm -hmm. and say, well, this is where the limits are going to be. This is where the limit. God has said what the limits are going to be. God has put out the boundaries of where it's going because he's in the, he's in the future. He's in the ending of the story. See the ending of the story. God is there and he's promised it back to Abram centuries and centuries ago. He promised, but there's going to be some enemies. Now, here we come. Uh, to Moses, uh, go down the line a few hundred years uh, after this point. Now, remember, Abram did not possess all of that territory, but it's for his descendants. And, and so God can promise you to be healed, and you don't mm -hmm. war for it, mm -hmm. and, and you don't get it. For example, let's say that there was a curse in your family, and you had a spirit of infirmity. And, and uh, God says, well, I'm going to deliver you from the spirit of infirmity. Well, but maybe you didn't get in your lifetime. Maybe you died because you didn't war for deliverance mm -hmm. from the spirit of infirmity. But your God is in your future. He sees in the end of the story. And so some of your descendants have warred and they're free from the spirit of infirmity. But it was promised to you. So you need to promise. Oh, you hallelujah. Need to war for hallelujah. Your promises. Now, all right, here we are, Moses mm -hmm. and uh, Joshua and all the boys and they're out there and and they're going to go in. They've been going out in, uh, they came out of Egypt. They're going to go into Israel and they did come up with this uh, idea to send in some spies. So they sent some mm -hmm. spies in uh, and uh, 12 of them and they came back with a bad report. Now two of them had a different spirit. You had Caleb with a different spirit. You had Joshua who mm -hmm. stayed in the presence of the Lord, but you had 10 people that gave a bad report and said, Oh, we're just like grasshoppers in their, in their eyes. And they're the mm -hmm. giants out there. The cities are walled up. So they gave a bad report. But let me tell you, you, you don't be looking at your land, at your promise. You look at God. Don't be looking at, at the enemies in the land that God has mm -hmm. told Hallelujah. you you can Hallelujah. have. They're yours. You keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep, mm -hmm. keep looking at Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your story. Amen. Woo! Amen. Of your faith. He's the, uh, he began it and he will end Amen. it. He's out there in Hallelujah. the end of it. He sees how your story ends. So you've got to keep looking at him. Now, because of the bad report, the promise was delayed. They were there. They had an army that could have gone in, but they believed an evil report. And so the promise was delayed for 40 years. Mm -hmm. They would not war for the promised land. Mm -hmm. so 40 years they had to wander in the wilderness now because they have believed an evil report. They may have believed a doctor's report or, their, or uh, some other kind of report, a financial report. It, it can cause you, if you believe those reports, a bad report, uh, it can cause your 
not for cause you not to walk in your promises for your promises not to be manifested they can be delayed if you're believing in a bad report whose report are you going to believe mm -hmm. let's believe in the lord's report amen, it's only, amen and after 40 years there's a new army coming up now you still have joshua and caleb because they said we're well able we can go in there and possess it right now and they wanted to go in but they had all of these unbelievers. Sometimes you just have to get away from the unbelievers, unbelievers and, and, and then go in and possess the promises that God has for you because God's out there in your story. He's in the ending of your story. He knows how it ends and he's just communicating back to you. And that's in prophecies, prophetic words, that mm -hmm. this is the way it's going to be. Oh, hallelujah, because mm -hmm. he's in the end of your story. Isn't that exciting? Hallelujah. I mean, it's exciting to me. It's exciting to me. Now, we know that when we hear from God, it's going to cause our, us to have a substance that we're hearing from the unseen realm. And that substance is faith. Because faith is what we're hoping for. But we have that evidence from the unseen realm. So God's out there in the unseen realm. Mm -hmm. He's in your future. He's in the ending of your story. And he's communicating back with you, back to you. And, and and so then you can ask, oh, he gives you he gives you a promise, and, and and that begins to faith to arise because that's the substance that you get from hearing of, from the mm, unseen realm. That's good, Fred. That's and and good. that faith begins to arise, but we still have to release the supernatural power. Amen. And, and so th that that takes us on over to obedience. And, and I want to give you this example here, and now I want to move to uh, Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54, okay, so verses 1 through 3. Okay, I want to start, though, in verses 2 and 3, and then go mm -hmm, back to 1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Enlarge the place of your tent. This is a promise. This is a promise that you can receive yourself if the, if it's, if the Lord is quickening it to you. It's one that Sherry and I have received. We had a prophetic word mm -hmm. on this a year ago. Yes. And, and, and so it's a lie. It's a promise. It's a promise to us, but it's a promise to you, too. I mean. Okay, go ahead. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out, stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare them. Lengthen your ropes and strengthen your pegs. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. And your descendants will possess nations and will resettle the desolate cities. Okay, this was given to Sherry and I yes. a year ago by a prophet. By a mature prophet of God. Amen. We believed it. We received it. But now there is the way. So we believed it. We've received it. Amen. So we have faith. Now we've got to release that supernatural power. And this is in verse one. That's the reason I wanted to hold her off on verse one. Hallelujah. Because this is how you do it. And this is how we've done it. That We've been doing yes, this. Yes, yes. We're releasing the supernatural power to bring forth this promise. The promise is we're going to enlarge. Hallelujah. And, and, and expand. Our, and expand. Increase. And, and uh, the descendants of us are going to uh, disciple nations. They're going to possess the desolate cities. They, this is a promise. And we've been shouting and we've been screaming. And okay, let's hear verse well, one. Well, I just want to say this. Uh, Sarah He is one of our spiritual daughters, and she just got back from uh, the the mission trip in 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 Asia. in Asia, and I believe that she did exactly that. That she spread the gospel. Uh, that she spread the love of God while she was there, and there were mighty things that happened there. Amen. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, yes. <laughs> and we're so, we're so glad. All right, in verse one, now this is how you release the power. This is how you release your promise. Shout for joy. You have not given birth to any, any child. Break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud. Oh, cry aloud. Hallelujah. This, this is not a sad cry. This is just a cry of emotion. Amen. Lord, amen. The goodness of God. That amen. He has promised you that, and you're going to release the power to receive whatever he has promised you. Okay, go ahead. You who have not been in labor, for the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. 
You know, and when I when I began to read about shout for joy and I, and that uh, shouting with a, a a loud voice and crying out with a loud voice, uh, I thought about uh, Judy's husband Rick Bowers. You know, because he he loves to praise the Lord. He loves to shout. He loves to cry out loud. And there's so many times when the enemy wants to shut us up and make us be quiet and silent. And, uh, and but this says, if you want your promise, you're going to shout for it. You're going to cry out for it. You're going to make it known that you believe the Lord. And that's what Brother Fred and I, what did we do? Are you ready? For, uh, One, yeah. Hallelujah! <laughs> We've been shouting hallelujah Amen. because what, see what this verse is, what these verses are saying is that he's talking to people that haven't received the promises yet, but he's saying, Hey, get ready for those promises. Go ahead and build your tent out, Amen. Amen. enlarge your tent. Uh, get ready. If you're expecting a baby, build a nursery. Hallelujah. If you're expecting a, a ministry, go, go ahead and begin building it and getting ready for it. Amen. It, because Amen. You, you can't just wait around until, woo, here it is. Hallelujah. This is warring we're talking about today. We're talking about warring for the promises Amen. that God's out Amen. in your future. He's prophesying, communicating back to you. This is where your story ends. Okay. And Bobby Joe Nelson, Bobby Joe and, and Daniel, I believe that this is only the beginning and that you need to be warring for your future. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we'll give you more instructions about how to do that in a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. So there's your opportunities. Now we're going to move to Acts 16. And we'll see that this is New Testament. This is New Testament promise and how New Testament promise operates. And then how we war for that and release the supernatural power. This is when uh, Paul and silas and they're they're going over there they're going to go into europe they're going to uh, impact europe and so well let's look at the promise and then we'll look at how they release the supernatural power okay Acts 16 verses 9 and 10 and a vision appeared to paul in the night a man of macedonia was standing and pleading with him saying come over to macedonia and help us Mm, I get a little emotional when I said. When he had seen the vision, we immediately sought to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Can we yeah. read on? Yeah, yeah, read on. All right, and then in Acts 16. Oh, of course, I better tell the story. Uh, he cast out a, a demon from a fortune teller, and mm. so the owners got real upset, and they and they had a commotion and they wound up throwing them in prison. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't say everything's going to be a hunky real dory. hunky door and really <laughs> easy going. I'm talking about war. <laughs> and let me point out also, it, it was something that he concluded what the promise was. He concluded, they, God wasn't speaking to Paul at this time like he spoke to Gideon or to Abram. See, there, there the words were very precise. Here he's concluding what the promise is. He's concluding because he's had a vision. He's concluding he's to go over and preach the gospel in Europe. And then when he cast out a demon over there, he did start leading people to the Lord and preaching the gospel. But then he cast out a demon and people get upset when you deal with the demons. <laughs> uh, yeah, they surely do. When, when... <laughs> <laughs> they surely do. They do. They do. <laughs> and, and, and so they were thrown in prison, but that's not the end of the story. See, God's in the end of the story. Let's go ahead and read this. Acts 16, verses 25 and 26. Now, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to the Lord, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, they were loud. And suddenly, uh -oh. there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison was shaken, were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were unfastened. Okay. Hallelujah! So they concluded what the what God was promising them to go over and preach the gospel there, and the people were going to be saved. They were, and they were in prison, and then they began to pray and praise the Lord, 
and the supernatural power came down and shook the building, Amen. freed all the prisoners. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, now I'm bringing hallelujah. it to a conclusion, and I'm going to give you some simple instructions here how to release how to release this supernatural power. It's one thing to have faith, but they, you've got to come mm -hmm. together. You've got to have faith and, and power. power. And, and so we're going to just look at Paul's instructions here. And we'll start with uh, 2 Timothy 4 and uh, read this. This is what Paul concluded about his life. This is about the end of his life. We're going to see what he's done over his lifetime. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. And then you know you were to imitate him because 1 Corinthians 11, read this please. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Be imitators of me just as I am an imitator of Christ. Okay, so what did Paul do? He was, he fought. He fought the good Amen. fight. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, now imitate me. So here through his whole life, he'd been fighting the fight of faith. And now he's writing instructions to you and me. And here, and this is First Timothy. And, and he mentions the same thing twice in both uh, First Corinthians one, uh, First Timothy one, and First Timothy six. We'll go ahead and read it out. One. First Timothy one eighteen. This command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, whew, Hallelujah. You fight the good fight. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You give one. What the Lord has said to you, yes. you can take and you can fight with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's important. You Thank need you, Jesus. to be fighting. And don't you want to get to the end of your life and be able to say, like Paul said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the course. I've gone on and I've done what God asked me to do. Amen. That is exciting. Amen. I just want to conclude by saying that we have talked about warring for the promises. God is making you promises. He's out there. He's seeing how your story ends. He's communicating back to you, telling you, uh, giving you promises that you can walk in what I'm seeing here at the end of your story. And so walk in it. But now a lot of people are not going to fight and they're, the God promises them to be healed, but they're going to not receive it. And that's not going to be manifested in their lifetime because they're not willing to war for it and, and they'll die. And they just won't receive them. There's a lot of promises Amen. that are Amen. just falling away because they're just praying, um, hoping to receive, praying that God will do something, intervene. Uh, and, and But God is saying war, fight for it. It's, it's yours. You can have it. Fight for it. And I've given you instructions on, Amen. on how to do it today, how to do it with faith and power. Bring it all together. Because that's the way God intends for it to happen. He's in the end of your story. He sees how it ends. And he wants you to be the one to bring the promises into in your lifetime. To bring them here. Uh, Abraham didn't possess all of that land. Even the Israel didn't possess all of the territory that God has promised them. But he's in the end of the story. He's made the promise and it will happen. It Amen. will happen. I don't care what other kind of nations are saying about Israel and what will become of them. I don't care. God is in the end of the story. He's seen how it ends and it's going to end the way he says it ends. And he, the promises that he made are sure. And we take those promises and we fight with them and glory to God. It's an exciting day. Amen. Thank you for being here. Amen. We're going to turn it over to Sherry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, this is, this is the time to war, uh, just as we, we said, uh, prepare for war. Wake up your spirit man. Wake up the, the, the warrior that's on the inside of you and, and war for those promises. If God's promised you prosperity, if he's promised you uh, children, if you have no children, uh, if he's promised you a family, if he's promised you a new job, if he's promised you uh, to have uh, transportation that's dependable, uh, then then fight for it, war for it, hallelujah. And uh, and so I believe that I don't know about you, but this has encouraged me uh, to fight even harder, uh, to fight harder uh, for my health, to fight harder uh, for 
uh, those things that God has uh, promised both of us and, and just me personally uh, to, to go out there and to, uh, to war uh, for everything that is, is from him. You know, he gives us good things. He is a, a good, good father. And, you know, I've been thinking about that song about the goodness of God. I think about the goodness of God. And um, and he withholds no good no thing. good thing. Ooh, that's exciting. He withholds he, no good thing. No good any thing. good thing you need, he's not holding it back. He's re presenting it to you. It's Amen. Out there. It's already been purchased. Hallelujah. Already been purchased by Jesus on the cross. Hallelujah. You know, this is a powerful group of people. This is a group of people that you're doing mighty things for the Lord. Uh, you know, we've got people in, in the workplace. We've got people in the schools. Uh, we've got people, you know, that are in uh, uh, doing ministry. ministry. We've got people that are all over in key positions, in key positions. And this is one of the things that we pray each and every day. We pray that God will place his people where he wants them in order to make a difference, that he will place his people in the government, that he will place his people in, in ministry, that he will place his people in the schools, that he will place his people in the hospitals, in the, in the vet clinics, uh, that, that he will place his people in key positions and give them kingdom strategies to fulfill his will in this earth. There is so much more that God wants for every single one of you. Oh, hallelujah. It, the half has not been told yet about what God is going to do with you and what God is, how God is going to use you. I saw Bernice yesterday. I saw her uh, in just engulfed uh, with uh, the fire of God and in the glory of God as she ministered to Judy. It was just uh, it was just an awesome uh, working of the Lord. And I believe that as we come together, these sessions are getting more, more powerful and more powerful. Hallelujah. And so you need to, you need, we need to stick together. We need to support one another. We need to believe uh, for those that need jobs. We need to believe for those who need prosperity. We need to believe with Sarah uh, that she'll be able to, to do beautifully in all of her classes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We be, believe as Tom goes back to work that he'll be have the strength to do that. Hallelujah. And we see Ruth. Ruth it has so many uh, responsibilities uh, on her right now. Ruth, I see uh, there's like a the big stones uh, on top of your shoulders. Right now, I remove those stones in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Those burdens are gone. And the Lord is helping you uh, to take care of everything that you take care of each and every day. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. When we see something on our brother and sister, when we know something from the Spirit, then it is our responsibility to pray. It's our responsibility to get those burdens off. Our responsibility to join with them if they need income, uh, if they need something from the Lord. It is our responsibility to do that as a body of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As warriors. Amen. We can war for one another. I need to be.